Good afternoon. This is Attorney Stephen Sabro. You're listening to Law Talk on 1480 WSAR. We do this show every Tuesday from 1 to 2 p.m. That's where I wanted to start today because periodically we see in the newspaper an announcement by the state police about a, a dr- what they call a drunk driving roadblock. And uh, it's, it, you know, I, I always... I always um, would see that in the news, and you know, I would think as a as a layperson uh, or a listener, you might be wondering, well, why do they do that? What, you know, why did why is there an announcement like that? For example, this weekend, the announcement was basically that there would be uh, a, a drunk driving roadblock between Friday night and into Saturday morning of this coming weekend. Well. You have to step back a little bit and understand what the law is with regard to, uh, in in general, with regard to uh, motor vehicle stops. Because, in general, you can't just randomly, the police cannot randomly stop motorists. They need some type of reasonable suspicion. Otherwise, it would be a violation of our Constitution, Article 14 of the Declaration of Rights and the Fourth Amendment. Uh, to our U.S. Constitution. So there needs to be, in essence, probable cause to stop your motor vehicle. That's the usual rule. But um, you can have a roadblock or a checkpoint to detect intoxicated drivers um, as long as it doesn't involve, and this is, the, the cases have developed this, what they call unfettered, the unfettered exercise of discretion by police. Um, In other words, if in this roadblock all drivers are required to stop or all cars in a certain sequence, you know, every third car, fourth car, car, something like that, the cases have said, uh, including uh, our our state court, our Supreme Judicial Court, and uh, the um, uh, the U.S. Supreme Supreme Court have said that uh, a roadblock is permissible under these circumstances. And further, what the case said, and this is a 1985 case, they, they issued guidelines. And that's why the state police, when they put those press releases in about a roadblock, they have certain language. The language is developed from this this case law. And it basically says that um, uh, the the guidelines talk about advanced planning, on-site control by supervisory personnel, uh, a limitation of roadblock sites to areas with a recent history of accidents or drunk driving arrests, measures to promote safety, criteria for conducting sobriety checkpoints, procedures for maintaining records, and and lastly, advanced notice to local media, to, uh, and this is from the case law, reduce surprise, fear, and inconvenience. So that's what what it's what the law requires, and that's why you see those announcements. And some there have been cases where the roadblocks have been determined to be illegal, um, if because the government has the burden of proof if they didn't present certain things at the trial uh, to show all that they complied with these guidelines. Uh, Or there was a case, for example, where there was a supervisor on site that on his own extended the the duration of the roadblock. There was another case where where it was determined that it was illegal because there wasn't a written plan. Um, uh, Another case where the information was stale. It was two-year-old information as to uh, the basis for the selection of that particular uh, site. Uh, so there, there is, there are these guidelines, um, but it, it's, you know, the guidelines are also, for example, if there was a minor mistake in a press release, that didn't throw out the, the road, the constitutionality of the roadblock. Um, and uh, so that's basically uh, the reasoning behind these these press releases that you see and then at a roadblock they they would s- stop either every car or every so many cars and then the the state trooper has to determine whether there's more 
it, whether the driver uh, or whether there's reasonable suspicion that the driver has been operating under the influence of alcohol, then they send that driver to that car to a, another area where there's a more detailed um, sort of uh, examination by the police about this person, and then you might get into uh, some more conversation and observation and field sobriety tests and, and the rest of it. But that's kind of the background behind these these um, announcements that are um, that you see in the newspaper about these these roadblocks. So again, our phone number is 508-674-0890. Again, 508-674-0890, which is the number at the office. And mostly what I do is serious personal injury cases. Workers' Compensation and Criminal Defense were located at 1026 County Street in Somerset. But every Tuesday I'm here from 1 to 2. You've been listening to Law Talk on 1480 WSAR.